So it is February 9th, and my name is Finn, and I am kind of stoked right now. I went to see a doctor today um, at OHSU who is kind of specializes in transgender health and transgender care, and talked to her about um, some gender, affir gender affirming and what I'm liking to call gender confirming options for me, and had a great talk with her about what my options are. And I think more than anything else I got out of this is, wow, this is what you're supposed to feel like when you go to the doctor. You're not supposed to feel like you have to hide things or not tell the truth or whatever. Like you get to be you and it's okay. Um, and I have never had that in my entire life. I have never felt like I could show up as I am and have it be okay. And that was such a freeing moment. It was amazing. And that's what I'm looking for. That is what I'm looking for here is a way that I can show up and feel like I'm me. And not have to, I mean, I can do that in my body if I explain it to everybody. But it gets really hard and really frustrating to always explain that this is who I am and I prefer these pronouns. And people look at you like, huh? What are you talking about? This makes no sense to a lot of people. So I admittedly live in a pretty in a bubble right now where people kind of just get it. And um, I'm really fortunate in that way. But that's not the reality for the rest of my life. Right now, I, I'm not working, so I'm not having to work in a work environment. I'm not having to talk to other people, um, engage with suppliers or with vendors or anything along those lines. And that's what I do as a job. I am an IT person and I engage with vendors and I engage with our customers and I don't want to have to explain every time I go somewhere what I prefer so that I can be comfortable. And that is why the gender confirming surgeries are so important. It's partly because it matches who we want to look like, but it's also about God, this is so complicated to explain to people, and it's so difficult to sit with these feelings inside all the time. Like, you can't show up. You can't show up if you aren't comfortable with yourself. That's what this is about. It's not about right or wrong. It's about being able to show up. So if the world worked in a place where I didn't have to change my body in order to show up and be comfortable? I don't know. It would at least be easier. I don't know that it would change my mind about some of the options I'm considering, but it would at least be easier. That piece would be able to fall off, having to constantly explain. I don't think that the physical appearance would go away. Yeah. I don't think the physical appearance thing would go away. But at least that tension could be talked about and be understood and not have to be hidden. But I have to tell you, having that experience was amazing. And it gave me the courage as well. I go to a group called DBT, it's Dialectical Behavioral Therapy. And I go to that group and it's done in a uh, Christian ministry, like counseling place. And I'm uncomfortable there because I have assumptions about people who are Christian about their assumptions about me. 
And I decided to give an example of some of the stress I'm under and some of the feelings I have about being in a gender conforming world as a gender non-confirming person. <laughs> And that gave me the courage to do that. And that felt really good too. Because even if people don't understand, if I'm working on myself, I get, I have the right to be able to put that out there and not feel like I have to hide it. And that has rarely been the case for me. And it's been a huge issue. I think uh, therapy would have been way more effective for me if I felt like I had been able to do that. But I had no models for that. And when people say, you're supposed to be able to tell your therapist these things. Well, yeah, if that's why you went to your therapist to begin with. But I went to my therapist to begin with because... I suffer from post-traumatic stress disorder and I have trauma in my life and I'm working through that and gender. Yeah, I have issues with that, but I'll tell you what the PTSD is way bigger because it interferes with my life. I can pass if I want to, I can pass as a woman. I can't fake my emotions and I can't fake the things that I struggle with because I have PTSD. I can't pass on those things. They're just, they're in me. And so I have to work on them. So yeah. Um, when it comes down to shame and I was taught shame really, really well. In a lot of different ways. I was taught shame by Having been abused, I was taught shame by having grown up in a family that didn't um, talk about emotions or talk in general. Um, I felt a lot of shame about my weight. I felt a lot of shame. I thought that was a lot of my discomfort with my own body was my weight. Um, but even at my leanest and strongest, I've done three Ironman triathlons. I'm not a weakling. And I thought it was a body image issue. And it is kind of a body image issue. But it's something that I can't change. I can diet. I can exercise. I can do all these things. And I'm never going to be in that body that I want to be in without medical help. It's just my reality. Or it is my reality. It's not just my reality. It is my reality. And that's okay. I'm working on that. <laughs>